Good afternoon, everyone. How are you guys doing? And hi, Facebook fans. I know you guys are watching there in real time. And today is the third module, which is develop a system and checklist for running your business. I know it can be stressful. Um, we have so many things that we have to do, whether it's family life or business life, uh, a lot of time it's very stressful and overwhelming, especially during this COVID era, okay? And uh, so today I'm going to um, go through some of the steps, you know, um, that you can do to help you to develop a system and have the checklist and, uh, you know, so that you don't have to be so stressful about your business. Um, okay, let's get started. And my name is Victoria Brosha. I'm a business advisor and financial strategist with Victory Finance Incorporated. And today is this third module of our August Master Business Success Masterclass. And the, um, the other two, if you guys missed it, and you can definitely email me and I can send you the recording, uh, how to get your business finance in order to stay in business. And the second is to how to separate, set up your business operations correctly so you can shift, swiftly adjust different stage of business reopenings. And we know that the, the business uh, reopening seems jumping through stage to stages. It's um, un, unreliable and unpredictable. So it's good to stay nimble for your business, right? And today, the third one is how to develop a system and checklist for running your business so you can reduce stress and working more on your business instead of in your business. And that the next one, sorry. And that the next one is, uh, the uh, uh, the last next uh, next Tuesday. That's a more uh, online presence. How to create a effective online presence for your business and craft your business branding and marketing strategies, so you can get more customers regardless of current economic situation. So I hope you guys can also join us um, for the next one as well too. I think there's a lot of uh, useful tips and also tools you can use in order for you to have effective market uh, online presence okay so let's uh, uh before i start it i just want to briefly introduce myself um and first of all i want to thank you for attending with my uh, master class webinars and um i know there are a lot of uh, webinars out there a lot of um and different people um, doing these kind of, I would say not exactly, but you know, similar, I should say, right? And it can be overwhelming and uh, uh, confusing. So why listening to me? First, I'm a certified business advisor for Small Business Development Center, which is a nonprofit organization funded by SBA and local government. Because of that, we, offer free assistance to help small local businesses navigating through the loan application process and also help in general for your business to survive and also thrive in this um, pandemic and this COVID era. And I get almost updated daily directly from SBA and SBDC. And as my personal business experience, I owned and managed a woman's clothing boutique for over 15 years. I did manufacturing, wholesale, and retail. And combined with my degree in finance, um, I really have a very good understanding um, and a holistic approach for how to run a successful business. And currently, I'm sitting on the advisory board for Industry Council for Small Business Development and Ambassador for Silicon Valley Central Chamber of Commerce, and also um, sits on Asian Affairs Business Committee with Cupertino Chamber of Commerce. 
Uh, I have been a business advisor and financial strategist for over five years. And before I get um, started with the briefing, uh, I usually do a disclaimer because the detail and the guideline regarding the SBA loans and the CARE acts, and then there's also a lot of other acts, right? Um, are changing, and that's why I'm doing a weekly briefing. And that this information is only up to date as of August 17th. Um, 2020. So, and today is the 18th, so it's from yesterday. Okay, on with the 15 minutes, weekly 15 minutes uh, SBA Disaster Loans and CARES Act briefing. Um, honestly, um, it, it's kind of uh, irritating, uh, should I say, um, not, not irritating. Um, it's basically um, not that much has happened in terms of the second round of PPP we were hoping for or some other things about the SBA loan, um, the EIDL loan, but there's uh, some little um, improvement, I guess, movement towards the forwarding. Um, this, I'm not going to take too much time talking about it because the loan forgiveness and um, you know, changing the eight weeks, 24 weeks and safe harbor. Um, I know um, some of people still feel confused, then you can definitely contact me. Otherwise, I don't want to repeat um, all these information. Okay. And also the EDD aspect. Okay. And uh, the the only thing is the um, the five year period that it's not retroactive if your PPP is not forgiven, um, and uh, it's now instead of seven months and two year term now it's five year term, and the first payment is ten months. Okay, after the PPP covered period, uh, if your PPP got approved after June fifth. Okay, so. Um, the second round of PPP is still basically being talked about because there is still a lot of the PPP money um, there. It's uh, over $128 billion. It's not funded yet, right? So there's still money. So there's still hope. And uh, the EIDL is still um, ongoing right now. And uh, if you haven't applied, I would say apply, okay? And if you have applied and then now you need additional money for running this capital, you know, because your business now has more increased expenses and uh, everything, right? Um, the EIDL money before you get, that's the economic injury loan, right? From the SBA, the 3.75% loan. You know, sometimes I say EIDL, um, a lot of people say, oh, what's EIDL? When I say, oh, it's the SBA loan. Oh, okay. But SBA actually has a lot of loan, but this is the the 3.75 loan, right? For 30 year. So basically there are two things. One thing is, if you got the loan and it's under 150,000 and you feel that your business uh, has a legit reason to ask for increase because you really need to show there your expenses, right? Um, you can um, contact the, the for reconsideration, same thing, P-D-C-R-E-C-O-N-S at sba.gov for reconsideration, ask them for increase. And there are people, uh, SBA has given some people for the increase, okay? And and also, if you did get a rejection letter and before you were saying, oh, well, you know, I, I thought it was a grant and now it become a loan, I, I didn't think I need it or you, you know, when you got the ones, but you didn't think you, you know, you need it, you didn't, you kind of ignore it, right? And now you can go back to it and have them to reconsider. Okay, that's the same email, the P-D-C-R-E-C-O-N-S at sba.gov. Um, and uh, it's better you email first and after months or so, if you still haven't heard from them, you can call them. But if it's, 
you know, within a month, even if you call the 800 number, it's not going to help because they just haven't been able to process that. So right now the SBA is in that process of, because there are not as many new applications anymore. Those are the ones who have never applied and feel that they need to apply, right? But it is now they are doing this reconsideration for the re for people, for the business who have got the um, rejection letters or for people who want to um, increase the amount. The max amount is um, $150,000. So if you have already got $150,000 for your business, then there's no point. Okay, but if you got less and you think your expenses can qualify you to get more, and then definitely you can um, do this reconsideration, okay? And send the email first and then you can follow up. And if you're in the state of California, um, I do have the direct um, California State SBA number, I mean, number and also email address as well too. Um, for not, not, I'm sorry, for Northern California, okay? Um, I mean, Northern California, so it's the Sacramento area. Um, and, uh, but I'm sure every state you're in, they probably have a state SBA um, district office, and that may be, be faster for getting the information or calling um, and get more information, okay? And as I said, our service is free and to fund a local SBDC, that's Small Business Development Center near you, the free assistant link is sba.gov slash local dash assistance slash fund. And you can just type in a zip code and select SBDC, and then you should be able to find the center near you and request for, you know, it's just a simple online form and then you can, uh, uh, the business advisor will, um, be able to assign to you and then can help you with all these, okay? And if you need my support, definitely uh, I have the contact information later, um, just give you some insight um, as well too. Um, as some bank and lenders are starting to accepting the forgiveness form, which is called SBA form 3508EZ. That's for people who does not have employees or people have employees, but do not pay more than 25% um, or no reduction of hours. Did not reduce the hours more than 25% or reduce the pay more than 25%, okay? But if it, your business is more complicated, then you will need SBA form 3508 and that's schedule A, worksheet, tables, one, two, and also there's a thing about FTE, that's full-time employment um, pay, then can also include the compensation, local tax, and also compensation to the owners. There's also one section for the uh, full-time employee reduction safe harbor in several scenarios, meaning that you don't have to maintain the same number of employees. That's what the safe harbor means, okay? So again, if you have questions, you can contact me as well. Um, um, I'm going to skip that um, 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 uh, pandemic employment because uh, right now uh, we don't know if there's additional $600 employment amount is not enough for people to live on. So um, it's uh, it's the additional $600 a week, which has finished on July 31st. And we don't know what's happening yet. And the, according to, um, it, um, we don't exactly know even um, President Donald Trump's uh, uh, executive order that for $400 a week will be enforceable. So we don't know yet, okay? And that's the amount remaining for the PPP is $128 billion. So there is some money there and we just need to know when they're gonna start the second round or how does that $128 billion going to be 
uh, appropriate to help the small business owners. I mean, really small business owners, not like a franchise or chain store or anything like that. Okay. Um, and also there is a new community advantage Re loan recovery program. And that's the new SBA program and each state is different. SBA basically was going to put it uh, with the express loans and also provide technical and financial assistance. Um, and it's for more of a like a, the underserved areas. But uh, as I said, the, each state is different. And uh, for state of California, for instance, and that's uh, up to $250,000 rather than $25,000. And you can use for machinery, equipment, working capital for inventory, material, pay, rent and pay and leaseholding improvement even, and the business purchase and startup. So it's almost like a, um, a SBA 7A loan and different kind of loan um, also, but this is the one that's um, um, uh, for more disadvantaged uh, um, businesses. You know, it's, uh, you know, basically it's more for ideal reception is business located in low moderate income and, and other designated underserved zones. Okay, so that's the, the SBA community advantage loans. And if you have more questions regarding the SBA loans and some other, you know, other issues um, you have, um, then you can definitely contact me again. My name is Victoria Brasha. Um, you can call toll free 833-382-1118 or email at info at victoryfinanceinc.com. And if you feel that it's, you know, it's a long story, shall we say, it's uh, harder to just to write something or leave a, a brief message, you can definitely um, book a free appointment. And um, that's calendarly.com slash victoryfinance slash 15 minutes. Okay, so on to, on to our um, today's third module, which is the um, develop a business system, okay? And again, I like to um, break down a complex subject of, you know, into those three steps. So I'm going to, again, doing that three-step approach for develop a system and checklist for running your business. Okay, are you ready? Okay, let's get started. Okay, step one. So it's a three-step process and I'm going to um, show you three business systems, okay? The first, and, and it's relevant to, you know, the current situation, the current norm, right? So the first step one, that's the business reopening system, okay? And what you need to do is you need to understand what entails your business in these three re reopening stages. And also check with your county uh, the, the business, you know, the county your business is operated, right? Because e even though the state might have certain stage, but that doesn't mean that your county allow, you know, can modify your stage, right? What are the four stages there? The stage one, um, basically it's like the shelter at home, right? And most business is, has gone through stage two and now in stage three, Although there's uh, rolling back, pushing back to go back to stage two, nobody is saying, um, you know, I uh, that we should go totally to stage one, which is good news, right? Um, but the, um, I don't think uh, um, people are in stage four yet, right? So make sure you understand what each stage will impact your business, right? E every business different. If it's essential business, those stages doesn't even make a difference. But if your business, say, is a, a restaurant, right? Stage two, um, 
can make a little uh, some difference because you know it allows outdoor dining rather than indoors and different things but on the hand you know your your steak may be in stage three right um but on the hand um say you are um a business that uh, social distancing is not possible like uh, spas right um personal care business and then you know, it, it doesn't work, right? It, so, you know, even so that also makes a difference in terms of um, the stages. And then it's very important to know what you want, what's the preparation, what you can do uh, in each stage. It's not only that, what can you do alternatively? I'm not saying to skirt around the law or anything. I'm talking about alternative way of serving your customers and clients um, in a different, maybe in from different channel, right? So depending on your business and see what you can do and also keep your customer engaged. So it's very important to planning on all different stages of your business because you never know right now which stage, you know, your business will be in in the next few weeks, few months, and if is it rolling back or could it be all the way, you know, it's finished. Um, it's done. It's basically uh, end of the, you know, stage four or even stage five in a way, right? Everything goes back to normal. Um, so you want to have that kind of preparation, okay? So that's the reopening stages. So the open... Um, so the business operational checklist, right? It's a reopening. It has to do with the business operation aspect as well, too, right? Um, the so the there are a few points. One is, I think it's pretty common. So I'm going to be pretty quickly going through it. But what I did this in such a detail is to know to let you understand, like when you develop a system what it entails to develop a system, right? You want to, things you need to do over and over every day for your business operation. You want to have that checklist. You want to develop that system so that you don't have to think about, oh, what I should I do today, right? This will be already be checklist. It will be already delegated. It should be set, but it will be also maintained. It's not just when you open, it's set that way, but also maintained, which means like keep your workplace clean, you know, set up the entrance receptionist and delivery area. I'm not going to go through the detailed steps, okay? And if you guys do want to have those detailed lists and steps, um, definitely contact me, I can send you that. And office and main working spaces, and the conference meeting area, if your business have that. Um, the restrooms, of course, all business have that, like what needs to be done, right? Kitchen and break area, room in delivery areas as well too. And uh, also the planning your staff, staffing, okay, planning your staffing. Um, that, that one I'll just talk a little bit in detail, right? Um, one thing is you want to have um, the two team, almost like, you know, it, depending of course, what kind of business you're in, right? Uh, in a way, this way that if the two team actually don't have um, e contact with each other, like say, if, if for instance, you are a general contractor, if you can, if it permits, right? You can have two teams, one team working, and then if somebody is tested COVID and have the quarantine, your business can still be running because now you have another team and can run that business, right? So th this way, it gives you this uh, um, ability. Same thing as if you have a retail store, right? Um, this way, if you can basically have people don't interact in a sense, and uh, now you can, uh, you know, effectively be quarantine a person um, without affecting the other people in that sense. So your business can still keep on running. Okay, um, that that's a, a important things. And also, of course, your employee should have the checklist. Their responsibility now would have to including the cleaning, social distancing, and the housing screening. Right, um, all these has to be done. 
and uh, also cross training to make sure that each one will be able to basically run a business or each two people team can run a business depending how big is your business right uh, and together in a sense okay and uh, um, of course if you you just you're you're only one person, you know, it's a little bit different, right? But if you could avoid some business, you, you can do something like that so that you, you know, one person get infected doesn't change the whole, you know, your, you know, basically make your business cannot open, right? But if you're one person, then you need to be just extra careful in that sense to keep the business going and also think about alternative way of marketing your business as well to have different channels so you're not just putting all in one you know all your eggs in one basket so to speak right and then definitely you want to stay informed and you know know the guideline know the in industry specific recognition uh, uh recommendation and um you know, and check the updates from disease controls, you know, C CDC, OSHA, that's O-S-H-A, that's more about the employment safety law, rules and regulation, right? SBA and state and local health department, but also the county, like for, for the, uh, the regulation, also compliance. So that's very important now. Okay, so that's the the one part, right? So by going through this business operation checklist, I just want to give you that example, right? There are nine points there. Each one has a checklist, right? It's if you put together, probably it's uh, one page or two page, depending on you know how how big is the letter, right? So um, so you want to have that so every day you know, one person can go through that without, you know, need to like remember what they need to do. There's a checklist, you have the date on there, boom, 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 everything's checked, okay? So uh, some of them, um, it, you know, probably once it's set up, it's done, but still you wanna like, you know, how the, the delivery and all that, right? It's just outdoor, so, okay? Um, so let's start with the step two. Um, step two is business finance system. Have adequate funding for your business readiness. As I said before, that we really don't know how the reopening stage is going to be, right? How the business situation and how's the money situation when you have a business, people have to consume whether from your uh, you know from the service you offer or from the merchandise you offer right so um people have to have money in order to consume by your business um and so for you as a business owner right and uh, right now there's a lot of uncertainty and uh, when there's uncertainty what what you need to do to mitigate the list, uh, the risk, right, is to have adequate amount of funding, um, right? Whether it's loan, whether it's line of credit, it, it just, you know, something you may not need, that's great. But if you need it, it's going to be available for you, right? So that's, that's important, okay? Um, uh, and now oh, I have a three action lists and those lists all has to be checked off, okay? So first action list number one, that's estimate your cost for retrofitting space, deep clean and ongoing sanitizing. So why I'm putting that there, this is expense that we didn't have to do before. You know, business owner didn't have to retrofit, didn't have to do all these deep cleaning and sanitizing. I mean, it actually, all these PPEs, if you add them together, they cost a fair amount of money, you know? Uh, so, so you want to allocate that when your business uh, starts, right? When you have the business now, you have to allocate that kind of money or account for, should I say, you should account for that kind of cost. And then looking for ways to cut expenses, like such as renegotiate your um, rent payment with a landlord, with a creditor, with a vendor, with the lenders, right? 
and some other expenses, maybe it's not necessary, then definitely reduce or eliminate. But also, you know, do do the negotiation with, with them. And they have this moratorium um, thing, you know, which it depends on um, which county, which state, right? For California is uh, until August 31st, and then they were talking about expanding to September 30th. Uh, which means that landlord cannot uh, throw out the tenants, you know, and they cannot charge the lay fees or penalties uh, or interest, I should say, um, for for not not paying the rent in on time, right? The rent is still accrued, okay, but it just they can. And then there's also once it finishes, they have six months to pay half of the back rent, and then another. Um, 12 months to pay it all right so that's basically the um the rule right now of course um it really depends i think it's better if you can renegotiate you know so that the landlord can forgive some of the rent and um, that would be really helpful because i talked to so many business owners and the most concern they have is the rent okay because rents are so expensive i mean i we have you know, business, I mean, even open like a restaurant, but they are, were in really good location. Their rent is over $10,000 a month. And uh, now without the indoor dining and it's just delivery, it, there's no way it can cover it, right? So rent becomes a very um, sticky, you know, tough situation, right? So that's that's something if you can renegotiate, don't just say, oh, then I'll say, oh yeah, you can pay me later. You will say, oh, okay, yeah. And they said they can pay later. I think it's better if you actually renegotiate it so that the, it doesn't become your liability later on in the future, okay? So um, that's the step one, okay? The step two, the list two, I should say. List two with these business finance system is, get your SBA disaster loans in order. Um, uh, there are the EIDL, right? Economic Injury Disaster Loans, the PPP, the, per, uh, the Paycheck Protection Program, the micro loans, and those are the loans like under $50,000, uh, some are under $25,000. So it's easier to get. And there are ones um, such as Kiva, you know, different kind of one that's $15,000. They're designed for uh, lower income kind of, uh, you know, rent, you know, kind of business in that area, right? Um, so there are a lot of different kind of loans as well too, depending on your business, your business location. Don't think, you know, oh, I have bad credit. Oh, I don't have a social security. Then you're not qualified. And it's not the case because especially for, uh, I know that California, they have um, the iBank loans that actually design for people that don't have good credit and don't have a social security number, right? Uh, so don't give up and uh, do ask, okay? And uh, the SBA 7A 504 loans, and there are a lot of business grants. And, you know, as where I am, I'm in Silicon Valley, right? We, I do, our, our SBDC, Small Business Development Center uh, uh, in Silicon Valley, we did um, the one, we helped the one with the, just finished actually with City of Sunnyvale, and now we are in process with Cupertino and uh, um, uh, and the Milpitas. If you're in Milpitas, the application is um, starting since last Friday and it should finish by the end of uh, this week. Okay, and uh, that's uh, um, svsbdc.org. That's www.svsbdc.org. And that's basically our center's business link. And then you will see the red line apply for the New Peters micro loan, okay? And, uh, and there are just so many loans. I, I went to the San Jose city of the San Jose website. And of course, I can't really create an account because I don't have a business in San Jose, right? And they have so many different kinds of loans and we are going to do a rent relief program for them in a, a week or so. Right. so. So there are a lot there 
And I'm sure in your state, in your county, your city, there are different kinds of business type of grant or relief. Uh, you definitely, it's worthwhile for you to take a look at it, okay? And then if you did get a PPP, make sure that you keep a separate um, account, you know, for expense account. You want to keep track of your business separately for the PPP for spending so that you can get the loan 100% forgiven so it doesn't become a loan, right? Um, that's also very important. That's money, right? Um, so don't make the business mistake and then it becomes a loan rather than it can be a hundred percent forgiven just follow the follow the uh the by you know the guidelines okay um and then the third step action uh, i mean i'm sorry and uh, the action list three okay the the for the step two of the business finance system the second step system right is to reevaluate your sales figure because as we know, uh, whatever we had in mind at the beginning of the year for your business, what you expected, you, you, you know, it's, you know, totally throw out a window, right? We don't know what's going to happen. Um, even though we don't know what's going to happen, we still need to now, given the current situation and try to um, see what kind of sales figure you can achieve it could be zero okay hopefully it's not it's actually you know good or you know it's you know it's uh, you know not i want to say good it's it's somewhat okay or some maybe even way below but there's some figure right um and some people some businesses maybe it's actually better because they did something that's you know um, that's people need during this pandemic, right? Um, so reevaluate your sales figure and uh, do a sales and ex expenses projection. Uh, very important. As I said, even if your sales is zero, you still have to do a sales and expection, uh, expense projection because those expenses, you know, as a business owner, we can't just walk away, right, with a business because uh, well, it depends. It depends on your business. If your business it doesn't have the fixed cost and liability, yeah, of course, you're going to say, oh, forget it. I'm just not going to do this business anymore, right? But if your business, if your brick and mortar business owners, right, you have the store location, you, you, you have a lot of expenses, or you maybe you got business loans in the past that's you know, you, you, you're still a lot of liability, you still have to pay, right? You still need to continue doing your business. Um, then it's very important to do that sales and expense projection because that's the only way you will know how much money you would need to help you to, you know, survive during this COVID period and then survive, you know, and be successful once, you know, the, everything kind of, semi under control right and now you will be able to you know kind of grow your business in that way even though we are in the difficult situation but i know that a lot of times there's the other side there's the sometimes the you know the the things difficulty and challenges can create business opportunity as well too it just you know it just depends how you can pivot your business i understand not all the business can you know kind of adapt and pivot uh, and then maybe you have to really um rethink about your business model right uh in that sense and what you can do and the, the definitely look at your current sales method and channels and if you're as i said retail stores your brick and mortar store are the other um channel sales channel like online you can do uh, social selling um, and uh, also maybe you can have other revenue streams okay to your business if there's some kind of uh, you know if you're doing a business is there some kind of complementary business you can you two three business can work together and share some kind of a revenue or ref referral fees right because you know you you build that 
team or and i would say this through business right so you have these kind of businesses you guys can work together say like for instance if you're a restaurant right you work with a dessert shop so now you have that dessert and and say like say for instance chinese restaurant right chinese restaurant usually they're not not big on desserts but they have really fresh great fresh vegetables and different dishes right and but you know a lot of people likes to have a meal and then they want to have a dessert right maybe you can work with a bakery dessert you know develop something that works well as after meal dish right and then work together and do do something like that and then do a referral and different things right and then there are other business as well too you know general contract work with a plumber work with an electrician work with so all these people like you know instead of being a shall we say a subcontractor but we actually because a lot of time they may not need this all these business like in one place right but working with these people and maybe can generate some kind of referral business as well too so you're already in your business but now you're having the additional stream of your business right and if you're an expert in one field and that's another thing you can do is being become a consultant for some kind of business as well too now you're not just you know providing your say merchandise but you can also start become a, a consultant as well too in your field um the example could be say a dentist or a general contract right before they they will be the one doing the physical work in a sense right but if you are really experienced in such things right you could really do something as a consultant uh, now that with the internet, you know, with the, you know, the, uh, you know, I talked to a client of mine that's a con con general contract, and he said, now it's great because all he, he uses, you know, FaceTime. Okay, you just have an iPhone. It doesn't have fancy equipment or anything. You say, okay, you know, um, show me with your phone the issue, the problem, right? And he can take a look at it. And while they were talking on this cl uh, client on the phone, and then he was like, oh yeah, you need to this, 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 right? So now he doesn't have, he is a contractor. He has, you know, team and building, right? Now he can become a consultant and then have a lot of things can be done that way. A homeowner has some kind of issues. Uh, he can consulting them on, right? So it really that, becomes a different revenue stream and it's not really using your experience and expertise right but it's not limited to what you do and and as i'm saying the dentistry as well too right uh, some issues um they can provide that kind of consulting and support and it could be even to a new newer dentist in a sense right uh with the more experienced ones and and things like that Okay, um, that's the action list three for the business finance system in terms of generating new revenue streams for your business. Okay, so the step three for the, the step three is the system number three, that's the business revamping, revamping system. Okay, revamping, business revamping system. Okay. And that's to adapt and pivot your business for the new norm, okay? And as we know that even if the COVID finish, we have the vaccine, we have everything, right? And we have, say, something that can, um, you know, have the therapeutic drugs and that can more, you know, more or less keep the COVID in control, right? It's still going to take a while to, um, to normalize the business, right? And so it's very important to prepare that, um, not just to wait and see, because if you wait and see, it's, you know, the business opportunity just goes passing by. And also if your business, you don't have that preparedness, then you're going to continue to suffer the, the, you know, low sale amount, right? So it's very important um, to have your business that's adapted to the new norm. 
And then there's also three action lists as well too. And one is basically reevaluate your target customer. You know, think about your existing customer. Are they still going to buy from you in this current situation? Um, some still will, but some won't, right? And uh, for some some uh, business, maybe majority won't, right? It, and uh, some business majority will, and or maybe even more will, right? So it, it's a different situation, but definitely you want to redefine it, evaluate and redefine your target customers. And also, you know, including new ones. What are the new ones, you, new customers you want, right? And then once you define that and then you say, ask yourself, how can you attract and provide services or products to them right now? You know, in this current situation, what can you do? How can you provide that product and service to them? Okay, so that's the action list number one, right? Action list number two. Now you know who you want to provide the, the, the service and product, right? And now you want to also say, what is my product miss, right? You, you already, in the center, you define your target. Now you were saying um, to the left, that purple um, hexagon, that's the, the product, right? Now you need to define your product and service and know um, how you can, you know, your product service is going to service this, your target clientele, right? And how can you adapt that? Um, so the price, what, you know, where, what the price you're gonna set, what place you're gonna do. Is it still gonna be more of a retail location or is it gonna be multi-channel, including the online sale? And if the online sale, how does it work? Or is it still kind of a referral, you know, by word of mouth kind of a, um, kind of a way of selling, right? And also now you wanna know, um, if that's all you know you when you decide all that and then how you're going to reach them that's the promotion okay and in terms of promotion you want to develop a marketing strategy and plan that's what i was saying that how can you reach them right how can you reach them that's become an action list number three okay and uh, so three questions you need to ask yourself in terms of that developing the marketing strategy and plan. The three question is first, what is your sales and marketing strategy? Do you have a strategy? Do you need to, uh, you know, you may have one before and you just need to readjust it or you need to create a brand new one, but you need to have a sales and marketing strategy, okay? And the second is, can you make money online? How can you make money online? Um, you know, everybody talk about the online, um, you know, move your business online, um, do online, right? You, you know, like, oh yeah, I know, I need to get my business online. Um, uh, but how, what, right? How effective, just having a website, just have a, like social media channels, you know, set up the social media profile or whatever it's not going to bring the business, right? You have to actively attract business to your website, to your social media channel, right? And then not only that, then you will say, how can I monetize it? So that's going to be if um, the last series. So my next Tuesday, it's going to talk about how to effectively uh, establish your uh, online market. Um, presence okay because it's going to take too long um today to mention that you know i you know i try to separate that's why it's a math class every class every module is built upon another one so then you have a general understanding okay so um the outline and now now the thing um but you still need to think about it um is how is right do an inventory yourself, right? Do a ladder age thing. So as of now, how is your uh, online, your social media, your, you know, how are your online social media presence, um, websites, 
um, and also e-commerce or do you want to even you know do you even have e-commerce um, so I'm not saying that you need to have all that but you just want to kind of take an inventory and see where you are where your business are. I know a lot of business they do have a social media account they do have a website right um, so um, some maybe post a lot and some they don't post right and some people set up e-commerce but nothing happened right so uh, you want to do inventory and and write down what's the situation right now okay and then see what you want to achieve okay that's also the, the three steps okay so all those three step process right that we have the the uh, reopening system basically that's also give you the three steps and then we have the business finance system right that's three step process three steps as well checklist and then the finally is the basically your sales and marketing right so you want to each one you want to do that three step process and that, that it should only take in a checklist right if you did something you can check it i like to check it and feel like oh i completed it so that's great and then it should be only just one page once you go through that you just have the three step for each area and that's it okay if you need a um if you need to go through um that you know with me for a uh, you know for your free um action checklist or just need to brainstorm about how you can do that three business system, three systems for your business right um, definitely you can contact me as I said my consultation is all um, complimentary right the checklist action list all complimentary okay I, it's I'm here to help small businesses uh, you know it's very difficult right now uh, and uh, definitely um, I'm happy if I can be of uh, assistance to you and you can definitely um, um, contact me toll free that's 833-382-1118 and email me at info at victoryfinanceinc.com my website victoryfinanceinc.com has a lot of resources as well too you guys can check on my website and there you can book a free consultation or you can just go to a directly my appointment link which is calendly.com slash victory finance slash one five m i m okay so okay that basically um is the today's uh, master class module two and uh, so before i finish i just want to first thank you for uh, you know attending my my master class and i hope that i have created value and bring you the points that's helpful to for your business okay and uh, i know it's very difficult right now and uh, it's uh, you know i went through my business uh, you know i went through the 2000 2000 which in Silicon Valley it's quite bad and then the 2008 right um, but I understand that the challenges I went through is nowhere near what is happening right now um, but I do understand the you know how you feel and the stress you're in and I just want to say that hang there and if we stay united and then helping each other will overcome this okay so i'm here to help and thank you and take care and stay healthy bye